Welcome to my tutorial 11C. It's titled UFO Invasion Game Part 4. It's a follow up to 11, 11A, and 11B. We'll start by opening the last tutorial, uh, Part 3. Open the Ships S movie clip. Click on the second frame and drag right to the end to get all the frames. Click on any of that black area, right click, remove frames. Go back to frame one, click on it, come down here and remove all the tweens, none. Double click on that saucer until it's all highlighted. Press the delete sign. And now the old saucer is gone. Pick up my line tool and draw a green line. Pick up any green you wish, any color you wish, and draw a line. There it is. We'll make it look that big. Pick up my selection tool. See that little arch? Pull her down a little bit like that. I think I want this a little bit longer, so I'm gonna take my transform, free transform tool, and just there. I'm gonna go with that size. I'm gonna click on it. Selection tool. You see how it's all fuzzy? Get on the crosshairs, right click, copy, paste in place. Tap it down a little bit. Tap it down a little bit. Right click, paste in place again. Tap it down a little bit. So I have those three rings right there. They can be symmetrical, it's up to you pick up my line tool again and I'm going to draw a straight line and make sure that I intersect all these straight line there it is there gonna make another one here making sure that I intersect them and have these little tabs hanging over going to put all leave all these on this this layer for a minute and lock this layer and I'm gonna call this green lines G R L I N E S just so I know it's the green lines insert another layer and I'm going to call this angles A N G L E S angles pick up that line tool make a long I want to intersect this this one here so make a line that's going to intersect this and a low angle like that. Do that. Grab the line tool again. Make another one about here, just a few centimeters, uh, a centimeter to about there. Pick up your selection tool, highlight them. These two lines now are highlighted. Move it till you get the crosshairs. Right click, copy. Paste in place. Go up to modify. Transform. Flip horizontally. Tab over till we have it in the same position on the other side. And that would be when this intersects there line tool again and put one right in the center here down to there lock that layer open new layer call it dome line tool this time I want a bluish color 
draw a straight line and make sure it roughly covers some of these two here so it's going to be down about here that's reasonably good that's reasonably good for my my spaceship grab your selection tool get that arch there's the arch right there that's pretty good grab your line tool make another line up here approximately the same size selection tool big arch this time mm, that looks pretty good click on it drag it or tab it down till it intersects with that other one there it is and it's 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 really good if you have some if you have some hanging over that's that's pretty good right there all right now I want you to click on this bottom line once and just highlight it get the crosshairs right click copy it lock this dome layer lock the dome layer make sure the angles layer is unlocked right click paste in place select frame one see how these are highlighted just click off to the side to get rid of those right click paste in place there's the line we just copied come down touch your stroke color take your little eyedropper up to you can see the green and we have that green pick up your selection tool select the green lines lock the angles layer select this line right here click on it and it should be highlighted all the way if it's not you'll double click with the cross here showing right click copy lock that layer go back to the angles layer frame one select it right click paste in place so now the domes layer is not visible and the greens layer let's make the green line let's make that invisible so all that's left is these this grid with frame one selected go over and grab your your paint bucket pick up a color I like that one and fill that okay that one worked we'll come back to the other one in a minute pick up another fill color that one worked pick up another fill color that one worked that one's not so that means one of these lines is not intersecting let's enlarge it make it 400 percent and I think it's this line right here so you, I've got my selection tool and you see how I have that little right angle corner that means I can grab that and now it's just locked in see that circle now I can pick up a fill color and let's go with something that's not what's up there a lighter blue pick up the fill and there's the colors I'm going to use for my my spaceship selection tool get rid of these ends if I click here it should only highlight to there and I can delete that click here delete that click here delete that delete all these delete that get rid of all these okay, get rid of all them just clicking on them and deleting them with my selection tool lock everything for a second show me all I have zoom out a little bit doesn't not bad not bad at all all right I changed my colors a little bit as you can see lock all the layers let's look at what we have let's make that bigger and we want to now put some fill into these two parts let's go down to your fill pick up whatever whatever you want I'm gonna put this one in this brownish color here again there must be some oh lock all the layers 
unlock the green lines. Select frame one, fill that one, and fill that one. No, they're too close for me. Go with this color here. There, that's the way mine's going. Now, pick up your selection tool and get rid of some of the things. Unlock all the layers, and anything that's sticking over, get rid of. So, click on that delete it click on that delete it click on that delete it oh undo that because we got to keep this here click on that delete it click on that delete it click on that delete it that delete it that one delete it no can't do that undo that now here you're going to use your eraser tool be very careful that right I'm going to delete the rest of those ends and I'll start back up okay I did all my erasing and I'm reasonably happy with that so now we have this this spaceship the last thing I want to do is lock these two layers select the first frame of the dome layer and I want to fill this in here so just click, come down, find a real, really, 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 really light blue. And fill that in. That's my spaceship. There's my spaceship. It's on three separate layers. Select frame one of all the layers. So I'm going to take it, my selection tool, highlight it, right click copy it so I'm copying everything insert a layer anywhere layer 4 call this saucer lock all the layers unlock the saucer layer click on the first frame right click paste in place lock it one by one delete these layers except for the saucer layer right click delete the dome layer right click delete the angles layer right click delete the guide and there's my saucer go to frame 16 insert a keyframe right click insert keyframe now go to frame 4 right click insert keyframe now this ship what we want it to do, it look, we want to make it look like, look like it's turning, so we want to have these colors move. Unlock the layer, selection tool, click, and grab that color blue, right click, copy it, paste it in place, and just put it over here because I want to have it later on. Click on this here again pick your fill bucket up come down here click on it take your eyedropper and pick up this red grab your selection tool click on this one grab your fill tool eyedropper pick up this blue all we're doing is transferring it select the next one select the blue pick up your fill eyedropper this ugly green selection tool bucket fill and that's why we stuck this one over here on the side and that gets that first movement of our spaceship selection tool copy this delete this go to frame 8 insert a keyframe and we're going to do the same same thing so I'll just do this one and the rest I'll do after I shut down for a few minutes right click on it copy it paste in place put it up there because eventually this is going to go back here click on it pick up your fill bucket pick up your eyedropper blue selection tool 
select it, fill button, eyedropper, crazy green. Selection tool, fill bucket, eyedropper, pick up this light blue. Selection tool, selection tool, press on this last section here, fill bucket, eyedropper, pick up this color that we got set on the side, selection tool, and delete that. Do the same thing for in frame 12, insert it, a keyframe, rotate them again, and then here, rotate them again. And that's when I'll come back with that done. So I'm back, and if we pressed our enter button, put it on frame one, press the enter button, and it looks like the lights are sort of rotating. Okay, back to scene one. We're going to go here and now start creating a second set of frames. Just click, drag down, so they're all blue. Get on any one of them, right click, and insert keyframe for now. Select your buttons layer. In my case, it's the one below my action script. Insert a layer and call this frame name, F-R-A-M-N-A-M. -A going to name these frames. I can look, click on the second frame here, convert to a blank keyframe. So I have two keyframes. Down here, you see it's called frame. That's selected up here, down here. Call this start, capital S-T-A-R-T, -S start. And as soon as I do that, a little flag comes in here tells me that frame has a name. Click this one, call it rules, R-U-L-E-S, okay? When I enter it, so now I have two frames that are by name. I click on this frame, hold your control button down, click on the this frame, this frame, this frame this frame, this frame, and this frame. So all these frames I'm clicking on, I got them all highlighted. I'm right clicking and I'm saying clear frames. So it'll take all the information out of them. So there's nothing on frame one anymore. Nothing at all. Everything's on frame two. I'm now going to want to put some sound, the sound effects. That would be the shooting of the laser and there will be the crash when the laser hits so if you've never done that before somewhere along the way you would have to make these sounds or find them you can search them on the net and find sound effects keep them very short or use your your microphone if you can't do it and you want a video and you want a tutorial on how to edit sound give me some feedback on their file import import to the library I have one called hit I'm gonna click on that that's when the crashes and one called laser and I'm opening them into my and they should be there there's my and if I click on one of them for example the hit Right there, I can test it, <coughs> and I make this with my voice, so that's that's kind of interesting. Right click on it and link each. Click link each, and we're going to bring these in by code. So we have to click right here. And this one, I'm going to give it a identifier name. The identifier name is it's much like the um, instance name. I'm going to write code on it, and I have to have a name. And because it's hitting something, I'm calling it something like splat. S P S H splash. That's what I'm calling it. The laser sound. Right click, link each. Export for action script. Eh? It's going to send this when you put it on your internet or you send it to your friends. And I'm going to call this zip. Z I P P. So I have my sounds ready to be to be done. 
I'm back on scene one. I'm going to click on my action script frame A, hold it down, and put that over there into my frame two. I'm going to open my actions panel, and it's like it's going to be similar to this new object variable. We're going to type in this information. Type, type, type. Two lines. It's a variable, and what it is is I'm calling it laser sound, L A S E R S N D sound, colon. It's a sound object. We're going to now treat we we now treat this be able to treat this like a movie clip, just like we did up here with the initial shifts. Make sure you put in the equal sign between the word sound and the words new sound, and part of the syntax is to call it new sound small n capital S open and close bracket semicolon and this new variable called laser sound attach the sound it's this line that's going to attach this sound and what sound the one we called zip and we gave it that instance name zip make sure you put in a period before the word attach and make sure the word zip is in quotation marks. The same thing will apply when you do the laser sound. We're going to use this variable name laser sound and down here where the laser is shot right here this is when we shoot that beam when it goes pew I'm going to put in a line of text code and it says that sound laser sound variable up there start it so it's just and because it's very short it's just gonna go pew, just like that that's how easy it is to put the sound in we'll do the same thing now for the the hit when the object actually hits back up here with our variables and right under the the one for the laser we're typing these two lines. Again, it's a variable. I'm calling it a hit sound when it hits. Colon, it's a sound object, and it's a new sound, part of the syntax. Open and close brackets, semicolon. And this is what attaches it to our, our video, to our game. So I'm just going to copy this part of it. Copy it come down here where the where the hit takes place <laughs> this is when the ship is hit by the beam so right in here we'll paste what I copied paste what I copied I'm gonna go back up here because I'm lazy copy this section here period start that's what starts it copy that and stick that at the end of here so each time the beam is hit by whatever ship it'll make that hit sound this is the end of this part four there's one more part I couldn't squeeze them in it'll be titled UFO Invasion Game Part 5. It'll be Tutorial 11D. When it's all finished, I think you'll think it's quite worth it.